Well, I thought I'd talk now about some of the ways of actually doing this open coding. And, and of course, the coding we did a couple of weeks ago was just simply reading through the text and marking bits of text with brackets in the side or circling things and so on, or underlining words, highlighting, etc. All of those can be done. And we tend to focus very much on the sentence by sentence or the phrases and sentences, the medium sized bits of text. But coding can certainly be larger things. It could be whole paragraphs if you want to. Um, you know, half a page can be coded about something or the other. That can be that, 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 that text that's coded. Or even theoretically, the whole document, although it doesn't make a lot of sense. But more interestingly, Strauss and Corbyn also suggest that you might do some line-by-line -line coding. And of course, typically lines aren't sentences. Lines are bits of sentences. Uh, and you might have a go at, at doing that. And, I thought I'd um, show you an example of this, and I think I've got the slide for it, have I? Yes, there it is. It's an interview with a, a, a homeless man called Sam, who's obviously got other problems. He's, he's got no house, he's homeless, um, and he's, he's been involved in domestics. I, I highlighted that in various places. Looks like he's um, had you know, partners at various stages, but, but had various kinds of bust-ups with them at certain points. But what I did was go through line at a time and code each line. Now, why might you do this? Well, the reason why Strauss and Corbin suggest it's a good technique is to kind of always break the backlog. At certain points, either at the start of coding or maybe after doing a lot of coding and getting overwhelmed by it, you get stuck. Somehow you don't feel, you feel the creative juices have either gone or don't appear. And you can't think properly anymore. And they say, in that kind of situation, often they say a line-by-line coding approach is a way of kind of breaking through things, a way of forcing your attention just onto the few words of each line and trying to get from that what it's about. And that's what I've done here. So I've said that, um, for example, the first line where Sam says, no, uh, but I've always moved around since leaving school life. And of course, the new line starts. Um, and I've called that peripatetic lifestyle. And then the next line he says, always been in a partnership. Um, I've always seen to, it's been a, so I just said partnership, relationship. And there's nothing deep here about this. Um, and what I think is most useful about it is the headings, you, you know, or the code you come up with at the end, which you might want then to reuse. I don't think anybody actually in the end saves their line by line coding but it's not a bad way of, of breaking things down a bit and forcing things. Now, I also want to use this to, to show a couple of things here as well, and that is how some of these codes can be simply descriptive. Um, so, um, for example, the line I've, I've called line 95, um, for years and years I'd lived with people. I put shared accommodation. That's, that's simply descriptive, I think, um, nothing more than that. But elsewhere, I begin to get less descriptive and moving away from that. So I think the domestics is one thing. I mean, okay, he uses the terms domestics. Um, and I've circled a couple of occasions where he talks about that. Elsewhere in an interview, he does talk about actually um, having the police involved. I, I think actually he, he, was, he was violent. That was, that was his problem. Um, and... Um, that's what he talks about domestics. Um, so there's, there's hints that there's something else going on there, that some kind of, of, of uh, more general category can be used. Um, what else? Um, well, let, let, let me ask you. Um, I, actually, I was going to do this. I'm going to say to you, of these codes, can you pick me out another one that's merely descriptive? doesn't say much more than, than Sam does. Car. I th yeah, that obviously, yes, yeah. Straightforward, that's what happened, stepped in car. No, no, no analytic uh, ideas there at all. Okay, can you pick me out another one that's, that's definitely analytic, that gets away from what Sam said to some underlying process, intentionality, explanation, and so on? Jealous. Jealous. That certainly refers to intentionality, yes, that's true. Don't like seeing, sort of seeing other person with someone else, so. But you might say it's just descriptive of jealousy. That, that's it. Any other possibilities? Relationships problem. 
Yes, I think, yes. He doesn't say that, does he? Um, but uh, what's, um, where I'm trying to find is, where, uh, what's he say? People, my problem is with me long-term relationships. Oh, he does say, yeah. But, um, so it is in fact capturing what he says to some extent. But you're right, both the jealousy one and that one are, are beginning to get away from simply describing. <laughs> I know. Terrible bit of coding, isn't it? I, I'm, I'm regretting it now, but you're absolutely right. No, you're right. I mean, that's what coders do. They make mistakes. He could have been forced to leave home. You know, yeah. Maybe he had no choice about it. Maybe he was just kicked out by his parents or his father or his mother. Or um, so, um, yeah, um, I, made in, in, I made an assumption here. That's my interpretation, and, and it's, it's suspect. You're absolutely right, yes. Good point. Um, I think line 95, um, partnership acceptable. Again, that's my interpretation here. I mean, I, the evidence is that he says, um, uh, for years and years I've lived with people. Um, he's not saying, I find partnerships acceptable, but I'm kind of interpreting that in what's there. So I think I'm getting away from the, the mid script of that stage. So there we are. That's an example of, of line by line coding.